Hello. Hi, so my name is Pete Bacon Darwin. And my name is George Kalpakas. Oh, so as uh, the, the gentleman in the uh, back there just uh, announced, we are both working on AngularJS. And also on the ng-upgrade project. So you wouldn't be surprised, given that we both work for AngularJS, that we really love AngularJS. In fact, we might go so far as to say that we're addicted to it. And I've got a feeling that there might be a few other addicts out there today. So we've got some good news for you. So things like declarative templates, dependency injection, and the amazing ecosystem uh, just uh, have us uh, coming back for more. It seems we can't get enough of it. But uh, that being said, uh, AngularJS has been uh, out for quite a while now. It's becoming a little bit of an old man. Yeah? AngularJS is starting to show a little bit of its age. Um, when AngularJS was first devised by uh, Papa Mishko and friends, the, world, the web was a very different place. Um, and the mobile platform didn't barely even existed. Yeah? Um, so this is why the team at Google and the, the Angular team have been working so hard over the last couple of years to create the new Angular framework, which is going to support us going forward for the next few years with the mobile web and other platforms that we might not even think about yet. So maybe it's time to upgrade to this new world of Angular. Cool. So one way to do this is you just stick a big bomb underneath your Angular JS app, boom it up, and then just collect up all the pieces and rebuild it in Angular, right? Well, it sounds easy, doesn't it? But uh, actually, Jeff Welpley's recent survey showed that uh, there are many projects that have uh, big apps and are developed by really small teams. Right, so these projects just don't have the resources and the time to just stop work and redevelop the entire app in Angular. So how about if it would be able to ease yourself of this AngularJS addiction bit by bit while still keeping your apps in production? So no, no detox, right? So ng-upgrade is a library that actually allows you to run AngularJS and Angular at the same time in a hybrid application. So uh, as an example, let's consider this uh, simple uh, component-based to-do application. Got to have to-do in there. We haven't seen enough to-do recently. So um, we've, we've done, made it easy for you. We've colored in this diagram so you can see which bits are AngularJS and which bits are Angular. The red is AngularJS. Funnily enough, our AngularJS app is all AngularJS. It's 100% AngularJS right now. OK, so let's see now what it might look like if we converted it to a hybrid app. OK, here's our hybrid app. Suddenly, we've got a little bit of green coming in there. But what you'll see is that the green is interleaved with the red. Yeah, we've added a new footer component, which is built with purely with Angular. And we've actually converted the, Angular app, the AngularJS app component across to Angular. It's important to note that in a hybrid app, each element is owned by exactly one of either AngularJS or Angular. Uh, at the top of the slides, you can find the URL to a GitHub repository where you can go look at the actual code that we use for the app and the step-by-step the -step upgrade process. So this is a good place to go and start if you uh, want to get started in the background while we're talking. Um, I think you ought to give us a round of applause, by the way, because so far we have not mentioned any of the bad Angular words, and it's really hard to give a talk about AngularJS and upgrading to Angular without making a few mistakes. And if we do, uh, you can boo us or make goat noises, I think is the appropriate remark. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. We're still early in the slides. There's plenty of opportunities for it to go wrong. OK, so um, this idea of actually creating a hybrid app which has got bits of Angular and AngularJS all mixed together seems like a really complicated thing to achieve. But we've actually managed to uh, break it down to a really simple API. There's only four things that you have to import from at Angular slash upgrade slash static. First of all, you've got two classes, upgrade mobile, a module and upgrade component, and then two helper functions called downgrade component and downgrade injectables. So how do we actually use them to create a hybrid app? So what we've identified is there are basically five steps to rehabilitation from your AngularJS addiction. Um, we're going to go over those things during this court now. Yeah, in this talk, we're going to show you how to apply each step uh, in your path to rehabilitation. Right? OK, so first of all, we need to bootstrap our app. I'm afraid that um, this is probably the most complicated part of the app, so we thought we'd get it out of the way at the beginning, and then everything else will be easy, because it is a little bit of a dance to get your um, hybrid app up and running. So first, uh, we bootstrap the Angular uh, app module using Platform Browser. Uh, this will create the Angular root injector. 
uh, instead of, of uh, providing bootstrap components, because we don't want to bootstrap anything until AngularJS is, uh, is also ready, uh, we will implement the ng to bootstrap hook. Inside the ng to bootstrap hook, we are going to use upgrade modules uh, bootstrap uh, helper method, which will bootstrap the AngularJS part of the app. This will create the AngularJS injector. Uh, at this point, we will let the injectors know about each other. And finally, the AngularJS bootstrap will compile the root element of the application. You cannot believe how long we spent trying to put that diagram together. It's, but uh, hopefully, it kind of makes some sense. You might want to go and stare at that for a little while afterwards. Um, so uh, what we've actually got is, uh, is two frameworks running side by side with injectors that actually know about each other and can talk to each other. What you'll notice is that the root element is actually been compiled by AngularJS, so it's owned by AngularJS at this stage. So let's see how we actually code this. Uh, the key to bootstrapping is the upgrade module, so we need to import the upgrade module to our uh, Angular app module, and then we also inject it into the constructor. So um, the reason we inject it in is that uh, inside this uh, ng do bootstrap method, we actually then need to call bootstrap on the upgrade module, which then does the work of bootstrapping the AngularJS application and wiring up the injectors like we just showed in the previous diagram. So finally, we, we kick up the, the upgrade, the bootstrap pro process by bootstrapping the module uh, using platform browser. This is basically exactly what you do in a normal app, yes? Yeah? So there's nothing very clever and fun funky about that. Right, so we've managed to bootstrap our app. And as I said, that was probably the most difficult bit. So if you manage to follow that, then the rest is going to be really easy, yeah? Um, what we actually don't have in our app is any Angular components or services yet. So our first step is to add a, this new footer component, which is a pure Angular component, yeah? Unfortunately, this is going to have to live inside an AngularJS template. So how do we do that? So in order to do that, we need to understand how we downgrade components. So a little bit about terminology. We've already discussed the fact that we've got Angular and AngularJS, which is confusing enough. So we're going to introduce more terminology about upgrading and downgrading. Uh, just to make it clear, downgrade means taking an Angular thing, like a component or a service, and making it available to AngularJS. Let's have a look at actually what downgrading in code looks like. OK, so first we register our component with the Angular app module by uh, adding it to the declarations property. Uh, in addition to that, we also need to add it to the list of entry components because it will be ng upgrade that uh, will create this uh, component outside of an Angular tem template. It will be inside an Angular JS template. So, um, so what we need to do now is uh, actually tell Angular JS how to uh, understand this uh, this co uh, new Angular component that's been downgraded. So, what we need to do is import the downgrade component helper and use it to create a wrapper around the Angular component, which is actually an AngularJS component. Uh, or It's actually a directive, but it effectively looks like a component from the outside. So now this downgrade component can be used uh, inside of any AngularJS template. So here you can see we're actually using it in our uh, app component template. Um, you'll notice that uh, although uh, this is um, in an AngularJS template, we've actually used square braces and uh, rounded braces on the attributes. These are not actually Angular square braces and round braces. It's actually a, something that's created by the downgrade component, uh, partly to help us identify whether we're using inputs and outputs when we're passing through the data between the, the components via the wrapper. Uh, you'll also notice that um, because this is an AngularJS template, we have to do AngularJS things on, with the attributes, so we have to use kebab-cased attributes, whereas you'll notice that in an Angular template, this would have been removed completed in a camel case sense. Uh, and also, um, we get to get rid of the dollar... Con uh, we have to use dollar control rather than uh, if it was an Angular template, we'd just get to use the properties directly. Um, and uh, if we were to have a pipe inside this expression, uh, well, sorry, we can't use a pipe inside this expression. We would have to use the AngularJS filters. Um, uh, final thing is if uh, you wanted to add a directive to this element, the element is an AngularJS direct, uh, element, so you cannot use things like ng4. You have to use AngularJS directives like ng-repeat. Cool. So we've got that newly created Angular component, and we've downgraded it to make it available to AngularJS. 
So why don't we have a go at doing the same thing with a service? Okay. Um, so to do this, uh, maybe we could add a, a logger service that uh, will be written in Angular, but uh, we will be able to access it from both AngularJS and Angular. In order to do this, we need to understand how we downgrade a service. So let's look at that. Similar to what we did with the footer component, we simply register our service with the Angular app module. Uh, this makes it available to the Angular uh, part of the app. There's nothing special about this. This is just Angular, yeah? This is normal, the way that you would uh, set up a provider for Angular. But what we need to do is make sure that the same service is available inside AngularJS. Now what we do is we use this downgrade injectable helper function. And uh, all that really does is it makes sure that the instance that you get in AngularJS is exactly the same as the instance that you're going to get in Angular. Um, this lets us use logger in all our Angular code and our AngularJS code transparently. We don't have to care about where it's coming from. Right, so we have created new components uh, and new services in Angular, and we have downgraded them so that they can be used uh, in AngularJS. Cool, so this is a pretty good start, and we could actually just continue in this way, adding more Angular stuff to our application. But what we really would like to do is start to actually convert some of our AngularJS code across to Angular. And we were thinking maybe it would be quite cool to do the app component, because it's, uh, it's quite a big, important part of our application. But there might, be, there might be a problem there because the app component is uh, using item components in its template, and it depends on the to-do item service, both of which uh, are still written in AngularJS. So we've got AngularJS dependencies of something that we want to convert to Angular. Now, maybe one way of thinking about this is that we have to convert all the dependencies first. So we'd have to change all of the things across to Angular before we can convert the app component. But actually, all we need to do is upgrade the item component and the to-do item service. So just to reiterate this terminology, now we're talking about upgrade. And upgrade in this context means taking something which is AngularJS, like a component or a service, and making it available to the Angular part of your hybrid app. So we're going to start by uh, upgrading the item component first. So similar to what we did uh, when downgrading a component, uh, again, we will create an Angular directive that will act as a wrapper uh, around our AngularJS component. So we create this item component facade directive that will wrap our uh, AngularJS component by extending the upgrade component helper class. And we also add the directive decorator uh, where we specify the selector and the, the inputs or outputs. We need to explicitly specify inputs and outputs uh, in order for the code to be compatible with uh, ahead of time compilation. And so the, um, the upgrade component actually needs access to the element on which the, uh, the facade is being uh, attached. And also it needs access to the injector. So we're going to inject those into our component and then pass it through using a call to super to the, to the helper class. OK, so now we simply register the item component facade uh, with the, the Angular app module, which makes it available to the Angular part of the application. So, we've upgraded the uh, item component. Let's do the same with the service. We've got this to-do item service, which is written in AngularJS, and we'd like to be able to access it from Angular components and services. It's already registered with AngularJS, as we said earlier, so uh, we don't need to worry about that. Um, what we're actually going to do is, is now create a provider inside Angular, which will give us access to the same instance. OK, so this provider will uh, use a factory function that will uh, retrieve the to-do items instance from the AngularJS injector. Uh, also, notice that in order to ensure that this code is compatible with AOT completion, we need to export the factory function. Right, so we're ready to convert. We've upgraded both of our dependencies. So um, let's have a look at what uh, has changed uh, when we convert our Angular App AngularJS, oh, we needed a goat there. AngularJS uh, app component across to Angular. Right, so those people who've got really good eyesight could probably show me what the differences are here. Um, okay, uh, go on. 
Now, I accept that it's pretty difficult to see. So let's zoom in and take each of the bits one by one. So first, uh, the changes that we had to do uh, in the declaration of the component uh, are two. First, uh, instead of having a controller as a property of the component definition object, we simply export the class. And secondly, uh, we replace the, the component definition object with the component decorator, and we move the selector and the template inside that decorator. Let's have a look at what happened inside the template. Uh, again, it's pretty simple. Um, we get to remove all these dollar control uh, properties from the code. Um, but now what we've got is an Angular template, so we need to switch across to all of the Angular syntax. So uh, we need to make sure that we're using the correct binding syntax with the square brackets and the rounded brackets. Um, because uh, we're now in an Angular, J uh, an Angular template, we need to use a ng4 and other directives like that rather than ng-repeat. And you'll notice that even though our to-do app footer was an Angular component, we were using it inside an AngularJS template, and it was downgraded, so we had to use kebab case for its attributes. Now we're just using the real, authentic footer component, and so we get to use the correct attribute um, bindings and uh, using camel case instead of kebab case. And finally, the changes we had to do in the class itself. Uh, First of all, we no, longer, we no longer need the dollar inject property in order for a dependency injection to work and be minification safe. Uh, we have renamed the dollar on init lifecycle hook to ng on init. And we have also implemented the on init interface in order to get uh, better intelligence and compile time checks. So at the end of all of that, we've now got our fully up and running hybrid app, which we could release to our con consumers. They'd be very happy. Um, Let's recap what we did on our road to rehabilitation. So we configured our application to bootstrap both Angular and AngularJS in the same application. We managed to, take, to create some new Angular components and services and downgrade them so we could reuse them in our Angular co AngularJS code. And we also upgraded some of the AngularJS components and services so that they were available inside Angular. Uh, on, along the way, we converted our app component across from AngularJS to Angular. So using the same steps, we could continue to convert all the AngularJS components and services to Angular until uh, we have no more AngularJS in our app, at which point we can remove ng-upgrade altogether, and we have a pure Angular application. And then we're clean of AngularJS, and we can move on with our lives. OK. So uh, we've shown you the basics of ng-upgrade, but there are a few niceties built in that we didn't have time to talk to you about. Um, out of the box, multi-slot transclusion, or projection as it's called in, um, in Angular, is, is totally uh, available already. Um, Carl Seaman recently uh, helped us uh, implement uh, interop between ng model and the Angular uh, control value accessor, which means that in a downgraded component, you can actually bind directly to that using ng model. And the Protractor team have ensured that Protractor works with ng-upgrade, which is not that easy because you, we needed to make sure that both frameworks were able to settle before you step onto the next end-to-end -end, uh, step in your test. So what's next? ng-upgrade is still in active development. Uh, so in the next few months, we're going to work on a number of uh, tasks with a common theme of improving the performance of hybrid applications and also ensuring that the overall developer experience is much better. Which might involve some documentation. <laughs> I think. Not that there isn't documentation already, but we're going to make it even better, okay? Um, so, we've managed to release ourselves from the addiction of AngularJS in small steps. And we hope that you might be feeling inspired to go, to get up there and have a go at upgrading to Angular. It's not so scary, I promise. And um, we're really interested for, to find out if any of you guys are either interested in using ng-upgrade or actually using it already and have got some feedback for us. Please do get in touch. Uh, our Twitter handles are here. Um, we'll be around for the rest of the afternoon. Just come over and, and have a chat with us. Uh, we'd really like to find as many use cases as possible that we can, um, that we can use to tech, check that the ng-upgrade is doing what people want and making your lives better. So thank you very much thank for your you. time.